Okay, so this is a multi-part video, and if you haven't watched the first video, I recommend you do so, the first and the second video, because otherwise you'd be lost. But going back to the this study right here, uh, if we looked at the supplementary material, uh, it might actually be this one. Let's take a look right here. Um, let's see. So in the supplementary material, which is what I want to get at, okay, here we go. As you can see, this is Ireland, this is Poland, this is Greece, this is all the Europeans. You have plenty of Europeans are predicted to have intermediate skin color. So this intermediate skin color is not foreign to Europe. It happens in Europe. It's what we call olive skin. Okay? So, we've seen the accuracy of this stuff. Now let's get to the meat of the argument. So, this stuff was actually published already in a preprint. And you can see here, the scientific papers, it links to this. This is a preprint right here population replacement in early Britain. What we want to go is we want to go to supplementary materials. And in the supplementary materials, you want to scroll down to here, that's a supplementary material. And it's going to be a Word document. You want to go ahead and open it. And it, it's going to be pretty, you know, pretty scientific heavy uh, jargon, but you, you got some names here. There's your Thomas Booth and your Yuan Dickman. And when you see why they said that statement uh, that I referred to in the first video that it fell in the, the last two categories, you're going to see how much either they don't know math or they're just, I, I don't even know how to describe it, but I'm going to show you what I mean. So here is the uh, Labraña, which is a, the guy from Spain. I think I talked about him in one of my previous videos. But let's get to Shedder, man. And one of the things that you might be seeing here already is like, we're seeing some ranges in the percentages, and I'm gonna show you why there's a, those ranges. So here's Shedderman, the UK mes Mesolithic man. Um, if we go to Shedderman's um, skin pigmentation, the first thing we see is that th th it's already missing three loci. This three right here, and those three. Loci, so you remember the, the 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 profile uses 36 SNPs. SNPs are mutations, right? We don't have information about three out of those 36. There's also two loci, this two right here that are low coverage. So what it means is that it, it only read one side of the DNA experiment. So you got two copies. So it could be a heterozygote or it could be homozygote. So they're making all kinds of like guesses in here, and they say it. They say it, and then, you know the keyword here. You can see the different guesses. If we, they assume ancestral alleles in all those five positions, if they assume the derived alleles. But well, here's one thing interesting. You see that? You see this right here? Dark is zero. The two categories that get a non-zero probability are intermediate and dark black. And we see that here. So this is interesting because if I show you this, this right here, the fact that this is zero, this has a, a value and this has a value, directly contradicts this thing right here. It says the results indicate that Shedderman's skin pigmentation was most likely in one of the two highly, uh, most highly pigmented categories, dark and dark to black, and not definitely the lightest categories. That is a false claim because this right here shows that it was it had a percentage of the intermediate and the dark black. But it gets worse than that because there are three missing alleles. But they talk about if they omit those three missing alleles, in, in fact, if they don't put them in their tools, then the, the percentages switch completely. Now it's 89.1% probability of having intermediate skin color and 10.9% of the having dark black. However, that's a big no no because this. It says it right here. Well, this completely removed the locus from the prediction model. Now the prediction model is bad. Well, we know it's already bad because that's the twenty-six percent, you know, sensitivity of predicting people with intermediate skin color. But now they're saying, okay, maybe it's not the best thing. Therefore, it's best to have some allele present. But they still make the prediction, the final prediction, to be dark and dark to black skin, and that's what these people were referring to when they say the last two. But this prediction is wrong because you should have been intermediate to dark to black because you have a missing thing right here. And they talk about it in the explanation. They say, well, there's a missing loss sign and something like this, you know, happens when you have an in, uh, individual that's, that's uh, a mix. But, you know, it's interesting when you see scientists, you see scientists are really smart people and I'm not trying to be condescending. They're not stupid and they, they're careful with their words, unlike the media that just say stupid shit all the time. They say it is unlikely that this individual had the darkest possible pigmentation, however, it cannot be ruled out. Well, the reason why they say this is because they really know that they don't, you know, they don't have enough information. And they're trying to use common sense here. But 
because you don't have enough